Hi, this is uh, Bob from Hobby Concepts, uh, here today with my cohort Winston uh, with part three of our uh, Grand Hauler build. Uh, today, I'm going to finish it up. It looks great, turned out beautiful. So we'll go through all the body and interior detailing and, and uh, just doing the final steps. In the last part, we got it running. Be sure to check out part one and part two. If you're not sure whether you can build one of these Tamiya semi-truck kits, this three-part series will show you that you can do it. So we've got it all running. Let's get started. Okay, we left off in part two with our chassis uh, pretty much done. We ran it around, so it's in the running stage. So now it's time to finish up with the detailing. And uh, so I'm going to get started on that. And what I'm going to start with first are gluing a few things together. I, I, I like to do the gluing because then it can be drying while I'm doing other things. And I found that uh, if you let it dry for a while, it works better. So let's put the interior together and we'll put the driver figure together. So for gluing these plastic parts together, I always use Tamiya Extra Thin Cement. And the instructions show to mount this to the base of the truck first and then glue the seat on, but I always glue the seat on first because I get a better glue joint. And these things tend to break off. So, as I mentioned in part one, to me a plastic cement works by actually melting the plastic pieces together and so it won't work on anything except styrene plastic, but on styrene plastic it works well. So I glue my seat bases on, and I'll glue my steering wheel to the column. I'm going to let that dry for a little while, and then I will glue it to the dash. Now the driver figure We'll go ahead and clip out all these parts. The only thing exciting about the driver figure clipping out the parts is there are some, even with my good clippers, there's uh, some little nibs left over to trim off. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out all these pieces and we'll glue him together. So on the uh, driver figure, pretty straightforward, the pieces just glue together. And the way I do it is I just test fit the pieces and then I run the Tamiya cement right along the seam. Notice I didn't put any cement on it when I push these together and give them a little shove here. This cement is so thin that it wicks right into the gap and just like magic, glues everything together. It does not leave any buildup on the surface because it's very thin. So, super easy to glue parts together. Same thing with his head here. I built lots of these driver figures. I, I actually like it. It works pretty well and paints up nicely. We'll do a little painting thing on this driver figure later in the video. So I glued together one arm and one leg. The legs just glue on straight forward. The head glues on straight forward. The arms, in the instructions, they tell you to use a uh, you know, like a synthetic rubber cement like would be E6000 or <clears throat> Chugu. Uh, because there's a big gap here. And the reason for that is that you can adjust the arms in and out to fit. <clears throat> I find that's not an issue, and I use plastic cement to glue the arms on. The, uh, the one thing about it, though, is that it does leave some a little bit more of a gap here than, than some pieces, especially on the back side. So, what I do is I use some sprue goo. Now, sprue goo, okay, is to me a plastic cement. So, I have a to me a plastic cement. And see how goopy that is? What I do is 
I take a bottle of Tamiya plastic cement, cut a bunch of little pieces of sprue, a lot of them, drop them in the cement, about a half full bottle, and then let it sit overnight. The cement dissolves the pieces of sprue and makes a goopy material that is really good for filling gaps. Um, and it's, of course, styrene, so it's the same stuff the figure's made out of. And you can actually use sprue goo to kind of... Uh, oh, I use them for filling holes and cracks and plastic and everything else. So uh, that's how I assemble the driver figure. I'm going to go ahead and finish putting him together. And then we'll move on to some of the accessories, like the air cleaners, the uh, mirrors, the exhaust stacks. Back in, uh, in the first part, I talked about removing the mold lines from the body, which on this I've removed the mold lines and I sprayed primer on it. Okay, so that's all I've done. And I use uh, almost exclusively to me a primer. There's two different primers. There's the fine surface primer and the surface primer L uh, that's not the fine version. And the thicker version I use only on the areas where I remove the mold lines. I sanded them with 600 grit, a little of the surface primer, and then 1000 grit. And then after that I use only the fine surface primer and I use that for all the other parts. It's very thin. It makes a nice, uh, smooth, um, solid base for paint. And uh, so um, that's all I've done on this spray primer on it in my little spray booth. I'm going to actually show painting the final color. Then what I did was paint the sides here with Tamiya gunmetal spray paint. And it took me a couple of tries because I had a couple dog hairs in there wet sand it with 1000 grit a couple times, but I finally got that gunmetal on there. So what I'm going to do now is mask off the stripe, and then I will put another coat of fine surface primer on it to even out the color, and then I'm going to spray paint it with this um, beautiful uh, TS-50 mica blue, which is what the fenders and the tanks are painted in. So for masking it, where it's important, I only use to me a masking tape. This stuff's awesome because paint does not bleed underneath it. Um, it's easy to work with. It comes in a couple different sizes. This is 10 millimeter. I'm going to lay a strip of 10 millimeter over the silver, and then everything else will be blue, and then I'll peel this off and I'll have my gunmetal stripe. So off camera, well, yeah, let's, let me put a piece of this on on camera. Cut a little piece of this here. So I'm going to lay the stripe, and I've, I've done this before, right underneath the molded in trim band here. And just lay it down, work it in with my fingernail. The important place is areas like this, this panel line, and this panel line here where you have to work it in. And I'll even work it in with a uh, a tool like a screwdriver blade or a, trying not to cut it to get it into the groove here. And then I'll pull it back tight against this hinge, work that in, pull it in tight against the other side and work that in. It's real important to, uh, to work it into those areas and then pull it across the door here. Then I'll grab another piece and do the same thing, working it around here, working it down in, working it around the back. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and finish masking this off, and then we'll come back and I'll talk about painting some more. So I do have my stripe masked off. So now what I'm going to do is uh, spray some, uh, to me, a fine surface primer back on it. And then I will paint the blue color. So I will go over to my paint area and show you how I do that. So you can um, see my, my fairly simple paint setup here. Uh, I've just got a couple of uh, spray booths hooked together to give me more room. 
and I'm going to use this uh, Surface Primer L. We'll just uh, lightly spray over the areas that are gunmetal that are now going to be blue. And the reason I'm doing that is I want my blue to be a consistent color over the primer. So I will go ahead and uh, spray this whole thing and we'll be back. So for the color coats I'm using a TS50 Mica Blue and I usually start with the bottom. I know it's hard to hear over the fans. like to do this because otherwise I forget and they don't have any paint in the wheel wells and you can see it and then I paint the bottom edge of the of the body line and another area that's easy to miss so and I, I warm the paint uh, slightly before I spray it uh, just with a small electric heater. It's not hot, just warm. And uh, I leave 10 minutes between coats. So I set my timer, I'll come back in 10 minutes. Second coat I do basically the same as the first coat. can of paint. The only difference with this coat is I try to cover uh, the whole thing making sure there's no primer showing through. So the final coat's kind of a trick. Um, wet enough to look good but not so wet that it runs. With a couple of good base coats on here it should go on pretty smoothly. Let that dry for 10 minutes and then we'll do clear. Well, actually I forgot, since I have two colors on this, I can't do the clear right now. What I'm going to do is let this dry for 
probably overnight. Then I'll peel off the tape and then I'll do the clear. So we'll get back uh, to this on the bench and uh, peel the tape off and then clear coat it. Well, the body is out of the paint booth. So now I'm going to peel off my tape. And I always like to just pull it back against itself. Not rip it off. This is always a scary part and a fun part. You see my stripe here. Pull a piece of the front off. Stripe adds a little, uh, little color to the body. I'll peel off the other side and then I'm going to take it back right over to the paint booth and spray it with some clear gloss. Uh, the clear gloss is uh, to me a TS-13 and I spray it just like the paint. It gives quite a wet look so you can see where it is been applied. And I will do two coats of this. I might even do three. Uh, because additional coats help to hide that uh, the bump where the two colors come together. Pretty much that's all there is to it. I will uh, go ahead and finish this off. Well, as uh, you saw, I just finished the gloss coat on the body. So I like to let that dry for at least a day, usually two days before I, I really work on it. So in the meantime, I'm gonna get on to bag G and I'm gonna do things like build the mirrors, the exhaust stacks, put the, um, the lights together, and uh, some of the interior parts. So those are basically all sub-assemblies and I'm going to go through them in no particular order. But what I normally like to do is start with the lights and the reason for that is the lights on this truck have three pieces. There's a, these are the roof lights. They have a, a body housing they have a, a front, I don't know what you call it, deflector. It glues in here like this, and then the lens glues onto that. So I like to do the lights because I like to let them dry for a while before I play with them. So the lights and then the uh, even the horns on this truck are two pieces that glue together. So the same thing, I like to glue those together so that they have some time to dry before I play with them. So we'll start on the lights and then the mirrors would be next because they also have pieces that glue together. The air cleaners and the exhaust stacks do not have any pieces that glue together. So that's kind of the order we'll go. I'm going to open bag G and we'll uh, dump it into my ever-present muffin tin and then we'll get to work. So here's my lights and my horns with the parts cut out. To me this is the hardest part of the build. Everybody thinks the transmission's hard. No, gluing these pieces together is hard. So um, the I use two different kinds of glue, the Micro Crystal Clear and the Medium CA. And so the Micro Crystal Clear, well, let's just do it, I use for the, all the lenses. 
So, on this one here, put a little glue on it, drop a lens in, thank goodness the parts fit good. And so there's the front fender light. And then on these, uh, on these cab lights, I glue the two chrome pieces together with CA glue and let them dry for a while and then glue the lens in with micro crystal clear. So it doesn't take but a drop of this stuff. I used to glue them together with micro crystal clear but it's not strong enough to really really hold them. So that just fits up in there like that. I use a little accelerator in there and let those dry. So the horn is two pieces, um, and I'll glue the, those together with uh, with medium super glue, CA glue. Uh, they also come with this horn trumpet end, which I sometimes use and I sometimes don't. Uh, I probably won't use it on this particular, well, I don't know, maybe I will. But you will look at the final build to see if I decided to use it or not. So I'm going to glue all these together, and then we'll move on to something more fun. Next item is the uh, rear view mirrors. This uh, bracket, this is the bottom, this curved part here. And the mirrors, I like to uh, mount the mirror to the bracket before I put it together. And the reason for that is you uh, put a lot of force on the little screws on these brackets and if you glue it all together it makes it difficult. There's a little tiny short screw and this is the bottom of the mirror. It's got a notch in it. So the bottom of the mirror just goes like that and these brackets just are held in with these little screws so I'm going to go ahead and screw those on and we'll come back and show you how to glue it together I've got my my uh, mirrors hooked on to the brackets and so now I just use micro crystal clear to glue this all together and again, I'm doing this one right now because I want it to dry before I install it. This just fits in like that. And then the mirror itself glues over the top. Micro Crystal Clear is great because it dries perfectly clear, so if you get it someplace it doesn't belong, it doesn't matter very much. And you can clear it off. You can clean it off the chrome parts with uh, with a little water or alcohol, even after it's dry. Yeah, you can see a little bit of the glue on there, but that'll I'll just clean that off when it's dry. So I'm going to put the other one together. We'll move on to air cleaners. The uh, air cleaners are easy to put together, but there's a couple of tricks. One of them is that um, there's pins that have to be removed on both sides of the air cleaner. And if you don't remove them, the halves won't fit together nicely. So, remove them like that, then you can, um, yeah, this one, as you saw, you can't put them together wrong. So I always like to test fit them and make sure there's no gap anywhere. Then this capture bolt drops through. I have built a ton of these and forgotten this. And this piece right here drops in the top like that. And then it puts the two halves together 
couple of 3x8 self tapping screws and the air cleaner is uh, is together and then the top has the same little issue there's two little pins right here on each side that have to remove in order for the grate to fit properly if you don't take them out you will find it not fitting correctly then this metal grate fits on with the, the open slot towards the bolt end the cap fits on and it's held together with a couple of these self-tapping screws. So, pretty straightforward assembly. It's all chrome, looks really nice. Um, one thing I like to do, put a screw in here. Is I like to paint this with some black paint just because it's the air intake hose. And uh, so I'm going to I'm going to paint that, but you certainly don't need to. So there's the air cleaner. I will put together the other side and then we'll move on to the exhaust stacks. Several more little things to do. The exhaust is two pieces. And again, you can see there's a stub that needs to be cleaned off. And if you forget, it just doesn't fit right. So this goes like that. Looks good together. We use these small self-tapping screws. The actual exhaust pipes just slide over this assembly after it's bolted onto the body. We'll see that a little later. Okay, so I'll put the, the second screw in that one later. We've got these exhaust tips which glue together like this. And they have a lot of little um, nubs that need to be cut off of them also. So I'm going to glue those together with uh, Micro Crystal Clear. And then we've got the uh, headlights. Let me grab some glue. These are, are quite unique. The lens, there's two different lenses. One lens has got little side tabs on it. And it glues in from the back side. Like that. The other lens, let that dry for a minute. The other lens has a, a clear decal that mounts in it. side here just to demonstrate but this just sticks in here and then um, you have to cut the hole in the center this is where micro crystal clear works really good because it dries really clear you can just kind of smear it around and then there's a lens that has a a little bump on it and that just glues in there like that and you can see it's kind of milky looking right now but it'll dry real clear so I'm going to go ahead and finish putting those together I'll put these together and we're just about done with the sub assemblies
The final little assembly is the front bumper, which just gets these plates mounted in it. And they just screw in from the back side. And then we can get our body and start mounting things. So, there we go. Before I get to the actual body, there's a couple more things, uh, sub-assemblies. One is this rear panel, and it just gets a, a grab handle, a nut goes on each side, and then you just pop it through the holes, and put a nut on the back side. And that's the way all the grab handles go on, it's the way the mirrors go on. Pretty straightforward. Um, to me, it gives you this funky little ranch here, which is actually quite handy for these little nuts. Especially if you've got fingers like mine that are super fat, you, you can pick it up with this thing. Whoops. And uh, makes it easy to get started. And actually, is all the tightening force you need. Then these, uh, these clips mount down here in the bottom. You can see they've got a, a little lip here, and that's to catch into the body. And they just mount with a 3x8 normal screw. And then this latch, there's a, a big, a long part and a short part. The long part goes on the back side. The short part fits on the front side. Screw drops through it. And that becomes our latch for taking this back panel off and on. I'll finish the rest of that in a minute. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about, the final sub-assembly, is this interior. Uh, as you can see, I primered it, and I'm just going to leave it the primer color. I actually really like this color for an interior. But uh, before I glue the wheel on, I'm going to put the uh, stickers on for the instrument panel, because otherwise it's just literally impossible to get in there. So we'll cut those out. And what I do is I put the stickers on, I'll glue the wheel on, and then I will spray the whole assembly, including the stickers, with, to me, a clear flap, which, which dulls down the, the sticker and just makes it look really good. So we'll get those stickers on. I'll do the other one here, and then I will spray this with clear flat. And then after I do that, well, actually I'll glue this together. Then I'll spray this whole assembly and the seats with clear flat. So one more thing before I start messing with the body. And it's out of order with the instructions, but I always like to install the bumper. Uh, because... I like to flip the truck upside down, and again, once you've got an interior in it, you really can't do that. And that makes it very easy to get to the nuts and bolts that hold the bumper on. And they just use a standard um, built-in flat washer nut and bolt. So I'll go ahead and bolt this on, and then we'll get to the body. Okay, we're getting down to the final touches. So there's the body, all clear-coated. Turned out really uh, very beautiful. Now. If you're like me, and I'm assuming you are, I always have to just kind of stick it on here to, to see what it's going to look like. Oh yeah, that looks good. So you don't need to do it to test fit it, but you sort of need to do it because you just want to look at it at this point. Okay, so now we've got our body, and we've got all these sub-assemblies. And uh, they just are going to bolt on the body, and uh, we'll be getting towards the end. So what I'm going to start with are the, uh, the seats and interior. So I need to remove this plate, and then we'll install the seats. 
So as I mentioned earlier, I left my seats just primer gray and this is pretty straightforward. You can obviously get as crazy as you want decorating the interior. But this is, this is good. And then I've got my, my driver figure I painted. Now I know I didn't show painting the driver figure, but I am actually decided while I was doing this I'm going to do a, a separate video on painting and detailing driver figures. Um, I just use double sticky tape to hold them down. You can glue them if you want. I have found this to be plenty strong and then he just sits in position like that. Okay, there's our interior with our driver and I can go ahead and mount this back down. So here's what I would call my complete chassis. It's got the bumper, uh, the back end's all done, all the electronics are in, we've driven it, we've got our interior and our driver figure. So now it's time to move on to the body. Now the accessories can go on in any order. Um, I like to start with, uh, let's see here, probably Ah, that's where I put them. The grab rails. And I, I usually start with the grab rails and the exhaust because these things help protect the body while I'm moving it around on the bench. Help protect my paint. So those mount just like the grab rails did on the back door with a little nut on the inside. So I will screw those down. And I'll do that off camera. And then I'm going to mount the exhaust stacks. And they mount right here to these two holes with a long bolt. This one right here that drops through with a, a flat washer, uh, flat or a nut with a flat washer built in. So I'm going to mount these two grab rails, these two exhaust stacks and the two um, air cleaners. The air cleaners have a stud that just fits through this hole and they mount on like that. So side grab rails, exhaust, air cleaners, we'll get those put on and then I'll come back and we'll do the rest. Well you can see we got the uh, grab rails, stacks, and air cleaners mounted. So the next thing I'm going to mount are these uh, turn signals and they just mount up on top of the fender with one of these little screws from underneath and this little white spacer and if you're using the light kit the spacer helps tuck away the wiring and you'll notice I've got my yellow towel here because I don't want to scratch my body when I flip it upside down. So, another thing I've learned probably the hard way. So this light just... And it's, it's designed to accept a 3 millimeter LED, so if you decide to do lights later, whether it's the Tamiya lights or your own, it's pretty easy to do. So, I'll get those mounted. That's pretty straightforward. And then the other thing I'm going to do right now is mount this little filler piece for the uh, hole in the top of the top of the uh, sleeper roof. I'll just do that with a little bit of micro crystal clear again. And uh, it doesn't need much a little bit here around the edge. Get some off there. Okay, and then it just fits up through the hole. I use a piece of tape to hold it in. I probably won't even take the tape off. And that fills up that, that hole and finishes it off. 
Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and mount the other side, and then we'll look at headlights. Before you mount the headlight buckets, it's a good idea to just prep them. There's a clear plastic piece that drops in here. Basically, that's a 5 millimeter LED simulator. And this mounts over it to hold it in using one of these little self-tapping screws. And technically, actually realistically, you don't need to put these on at all. But for the same reason as the other things I install, then if you want to add lights later, that bracket that captures the light is already there. So in order to mount these, we have to do the grill at the same time. So the grill mounts like this, and then the light fits in here, and a screw goes into the back of the grill. So they're kind of all interconnected. Um, I usually start with this 3x8 self-tapping screw that holds the top of the grill. You'll probably have to pardon my head in a few shots here. Get that grill put into place. then the light can mount in and it mounts with two self-tapping screws that also hold the grill together. So I'll go ahead and finish that and do the opposite side and then we'll do the front side of them. Okay so now it's time to mount the headlight on the outside. Uh, there's a tab on the back here and a slot right there and they just glue on. Now the only place the glue touches is on the chrome part right here. It doesn't touch over on the plastic because this is actually spaced out a little bit. So again, I use my good old micro crystal clear. People ask me, where can you get this? Amazon. And they say, I can't find it. That's because it's spelled with a K, crystal clear. So if you're having a problem finding it, that's how you find it. I should probably sell it. I'll have to look into that. I certainly use a ton of it. Um, okay, so this just glues on. Voila! Now because I'm going to be moving this body around and doing some work, I'll use a piece of blue tape to hold it in place till it dries and I'll do the other side really uh, dialing in on the end of this project. The windshield, um, and the, the Grand Hauler has a clearer windshield than the King Hauler. The King Hauler is tinted quite dark. Um, I, I like this one because I usually put driver figures in my truck. And it just fits into place on these studs and 3 by 8 screws hold it on. Now the dash there's my dash after um, painting the clear coat and putting it together. The clear coat is a flat clear coat. Um, and this is just the primer. I think it turns out really well. And it just mounts up inside here. And the screws hold it together. So, again, pretty straightforward stuff. Actually, though, I'm going to put the two screws up here first because. A little hard to get the screwdriver past the steering wheel on that screw. So I'll go ahead and uh, mount the the windshield and mount the um, the dash here. I actually decided uh, just for ease of getting to the nuts to mount the mirrors and the side windows before I mount the dash. Uh, these just fit through the holes in the side here. And then the window fits on the back side like that. And a two millimeter nut holds it together. So again, we'll just 
just use my little funky nut driver they give you. And we'll get the two side windows in. Then I'll mount the dash. The roof clearance lights just screw on this uh, panel and screw onto the cab with one of the self-tapping screws and a washer up from the bottom. One thing you want to watch for is this side has, is clean and this side has a couple of nibs where it was cut off of the tree. And to me it gives you some of each direction. So I always put the, the shiny side out and then find one that's got the shiny side out for the other side. Uh, and then like here, I've got a shiny side out and a shiny side out. So when you're looking in, you're looking at the shiny side right from the start. It's just a little thing, but I'm a little bit weird that way sometimes. Now, this panel is designed to glue in place. And if I glue it in, I usually use Micro Crystal Clear. Um, on this particular truck, I'm just going to tape it in from the bottom with a piece of masking tape. And the reason for that is if you do decide to add lights later, uh, it's handy to not have this glued in. And I'm not going to be putting lights in this truck. I'm sticking to the just build it right out of the box video. But if you want to see uh, how to install lights in the truck, I have a video series on a custom uh, grand hauler and you can go see that. So this is ready to go and it'll just mount like that. I'll tape it in from the bottom side and we'll mount these two lights up here. We're uh, really coming in on the end here. Uh, to me it tells you in the instructions right here to glue this visor on by putting some glue on these tabs and then they just sit in this little notch right here. And I'm telling you right now, don't do it. They, it it's, it's useless. They break off if you look at them sideways. So what I do is I use, there's always some spare leftover self-tapping screws, and I will drill holes in this and holes in the body and use a self-tapping screw on either side to mount this. It's much more solid, it'll never break off, it looks great. And uh, so, everybody probably has their own favorite method of doing it. I use a number 47 number drill. But if you just have a small drill and you can use an X-Acto knife to, to uh, hog it out, whatever. Um, you want to drill the hole Above this, back here, oh Winston, what a snore. Um, back above this, right up in this area. So I'm like, right in there. So that's what it looks like on the outside. I've done a ton of these, so I'm kind of used to where to drill them. Okay. And my self-tapping screw should slide through that reasonably well. It does. Okay, and then I'm going to use a smaller drill. And like a number... 52 here. A little nerve wracking, but not bad. I'm going to drill it. This is probably going to be hard for you to see, but I'm going to drill it forward of this, right in this area right here. And uh, Don't have to 
go crazy. Okay, now with any luck, because I haven't cut away on this shot to cover my mistakes, this will just screw right on. Way, 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 way better than trying to glue it. The paint just keeps the glue from sticking. And, uh, it's one of the few things I I totally disagree with Tamiya's instructions on. But uh, that's okay. They give you the extra screws. They come uh, right in the kit, so why not take advantage of them? Okay, and there's our visor bolted on. Uh, all right, so uh, the, really one of the last things now, actually the last things, are the windshield wipers, which glue down in here. And I will just use micro crystal clear to glue them in. And then <clears throat> these little devils, which also break if you look at them sideways, which are the horns, and they glue in these two spots up here on the cab, and I use micro crystal clear to glue those in. To me, it actually makes metal horns <clears throat> that are beautiful, but they've been on back order forever. <clears throat> to me, it's having supply issues like all the time, as you're probably finding out if you're looking around to buy a grand hauler. I, I struggle to keep them in stock, but it's the way it is nowadays. So I will go ahead and glue these on and glue the wipers on, and then uh, a couple little details will be ready to mount this. One final thing I like to do is uh, I use a liquid chrome pen to uh, just highlight the door handles. It's an easy thing to do. I think you can get these at Hobby Lobby. Do this back one here. A couple little touches like this just make your truck stand out. Okay, do the other side, and then we'll be ready to slide this on. So with our body finished, it just slides over the cab. And if it doesn't slide into place correctly, it's probably because the steps are on wrong or the exhaust pipes are on wrong. The exhaust pipe, the mounting screw, is in the front part on this side, so it's towards the back. And then everything fits good, and you use a 3x6 screw to mount it. And there's four, let's see here, there's four screws that mount on. There we go. It takes a little wiggling sometimes to get it in place. So there's two screws here, two screws here, and the same on the other side. So eight screws. So later on, if you ever want to add lights, eight screws removes the body, two screws remove the back bumper, and you've got everything open up to put lights in. Um, I'm going to go ahead and screw this down, and we'll talk about some final detail. Woohoo! The final steps for the exhaust pipes, these are chrome-plated steel. <laughs> They're really beautiful. And they just slide into place. There's a little fin here on the bottom that holds them tightly. So that is real easy. And you can take them off for transport, whatever. They also give you these chrome tips that just press fit in. If you're going to keep them in there permanently, I'd use a little bit of glue to glue them in or put some tape around them to make them fit tight. I personally like the look of just the stack or I've actually sawed them off on my bandsaw to do a, an angled back. But uh, the kit comes with those. And then the rear panel just has these two little feet that grab a couple of slots down here. And the latches fold out and the rear panel goes on. Well, the, look at that. It's done. Just like that. Driver looks really great in there. I know it's pretty hard to see on video, but 
His hands fit the steering wheel nice and he just looks fantastic. So um, I'm going to clean off my bench. We'll do some beauty pictures of this truck and finish up. Well, there we go. Finished truck. As you can see, it turned out very, very nice. Um, and that's just the stock kit. Um, <laughs> I like this color combination. I think it turned out really, really good. Um, that's to me a mica blue with a gunmetal stripe. Uh, stripped the chrome off the tanks and painted them. Stripped the chrome off the visor and painted that gunmetal. Painted the uh, fifth wheel deck gunmetal. And uh, other than that, we're, we're basically pretty stock. So, people always ask me, oh, these cost thousands of dollars to build. No, they don't. Um, what we're looking at the time of this video, which is May 2022, is $569 for the truck kit, the radio, the bearings, the servos, and the speed control. <clears throat> so $569 plus we added a $25 motor. Okay, and that's it. Other than paint and uh, a battery. And you're ready to go. Now, can you spend more? Oh yeah. Once you build the truck, you can do all kinds of things. Uh, here's a polished uh, grill, polished aluminum grill with a Kenworth logo. You know, I mean that looks spectacular on these. Here's uh, uh, aluminum alloy wheels that have um, wheel caps to hide the nuts. Uh, this is a whole set. Um, those are just a couple of examples. And then, of course, the popular example is to me is multifunction unit which gives you lights and sound and vibration and all kinds of features and that can be added and as I showed it's really not hard to add eight screws of body comes off two screws of bumper comes off away you go you can even get uh, more adventurous with the uh, Bayer SFR1 which provides uh, sound lights and speed control um, replacing the stock speed control has uh, way more function, sounds for hundreds of trucks, and you can do music and different horn sounds and uh, songs, uh, all kinds of things you can pick up on my videos on this. So those are some things you can add in the future, but frankly, this truck looks beautiful. It looks fantastic on the shelf. It runs great. You don't need to go crazy to start with, um, and you can do it. I mean, seriously, if you can work a screwdriver, you can build one of these trucks as we've seen in part one, two, and three. So, there we go. Uh, please give me a thumbs up. I, I really appreciate those. Subscribe to my channel and uh, um, ring the little bell. It'll tell you when a new video comes out. I will do a video on building and painting drivers pretty soon. I have a new radio review coming up. And then I'm going to do uh, another kind of a unique build um, of a Mercedes Coke truck. And that's coming up pretty soon, uh, along with some other things. So uh, hopefully we'll, we're back in the saddle. We'll be building again. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I really appreciate it. We'll see you next time.